Hello and welcome to Scrivener, using templates for beginners, helping you get organized and fighting the overwhelming feelings with using Scrivener. Why are we using Scrivener? Well, because it's awesome. It helps to get authors organized. That is the number one reason to use Scrivener versus any other program. I did another video about why using Scrivener. Go check that out if you're not convinced yet. But in a nutshell, Scrivener helps you organize your media, helps you organize your text, your photos, your charts, all that stuff helps you organize it and keep it all in one document so that when you are ready to uh, compile it and export it, it's all right there and it's worth the effort of learning it. But when you first look into it, it can be pretty overwhelming. So in this particular video, we're gonna look at how to fight that overwhelm. So how do you do that? Well, you can use templates. Templates are a super powerful way to not only uh, organize your folders and organize your the little containers where you're going to put your media, but also to help you understand how Scrivener works. So um, let's look at templates and Scrivener. So why? Are we going to do this? Why is this template helpful? Well, I'm going to first go through a template that I've already created and show you how it's helpful to see the different collections. And uh, there's a help file that comes with this particular template we're using. So we'll do that first, look at a, an existing template, and then I'm going to show you how to make your own new template from scratch. So pretty basic stuff. So. Uh, real quick, I'm David Bourne, and I'm making these kinds of videos to show you my process as I learn Scrivener myself. I am writing uh, my first book, so I'm using Scrivener to do that. I'm pretty good with text, so I thought, well, I'll make some videos and show people what I learn as I go. And if you like any of this information, please like and subscribe. That really helps and helps other people find content like this. And I'm going to be doing some other upcoming Scrivener videos. So if you have any ideas or questions, let me know. So here we are in a template that I have already created uh, using uh, the steps I'll show you in just a, just a second, going up to file and a new project. So Scrivener calls this a project. And we're just going to do a quick overview of what's what. First of all, it gives you this help file. And it makes these little uh, what if you think of them as folders in a folder and documents within a folder that can be helpful. So this manuscript folder is the same thing as a draft folder. Scrivener also calls this a draft folder. Um, so this forward could also be like an intro. Everything's blank, by the way. Um, so it assumes you're going to make more than one chapter probably, but it starts you off with a one and then it puts the section within the chapter. This front matter and back matter, if I do the little twisty here, um, what that does is it just gives you the different types of formatting that you're gonna wanna use depending on what you go to in your final export. So for example, if you're making a paperback, uh, this will be, uh, this will give you some existing documents to help get you going there. So I think this is super helpful. I'm going to be making an ebook this December, and so uh, I'm going to be looking at this stuff later. Now, I don't really understand how these things really work yet, uh, but I'm not worried about that because the the key here is to just get an overview of how it works not to get down into the basics and that's one of the tricks about learning tech is just to make something and play around with a scratch file that you know you're going to throw away and so that's what i've done here i've just made a a template uh, and so just to review quickly some more of what's what uh, the back matter these are just a couple of things that may show up on uh, the back of your book so the end notes if you're doing that. And uh, if you're not doing end notes, you would just delete these folders. Now, notes, these are things that will not wind up in your final manuscript, but Scrivener does give you a place to do this. So it's made a little notes folder, and I don't have any notes in here. Uh, an idea folder. Uh, 
Yeah. So, and then just research is where you could put scraps of information. It it goes ahead. It puts a sample manuscript in here. So, if you're wondering what a final manuscript might look like, this is what it looks like after it's compiled. And you can just scroll through here. Let me grab the scroll bar just to kind of show you. Now, what does compile mean? Compile means when you just takes all your words that you've put together in Scrivener and it spits it out in a format that uh, either booksellers or book reviewers like. So it puts some dummy data in here just to give you an idea of what this particular template would spit out. So, and then you've got your trash. All right, now that's just basically what it looks like. Now, one other thing that I want to show you is this very, you know, it's kind of hard to read, but if you go up to view and then go down to zoom and you zoom in a few times, now that is command shift greater than symbol. So I really recommend that you read this document if you're first doing this. Now notice it says general nonfiction. This is the type of template that I picked, a general nonfiction document, because that's what I'm writing, a general nonfiction book. And it helps you to go through this and read what it is saying and just read. Don't get bogged down into the details. For example, tables and figures. This didn't make a lot of sense to me at first, so I just skipped over it. I'll come back to it when I need to know more about that. Compiling, I was curious how to know that it compiles. So how does it take all the text and put it all together in the final end? So I did read that real quick. But if you read it through, you just find that you can get a general overview of how Scrivener works. So that was really awesome. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just show you how I did this, okay? So this is one that I already completed, already, uh, looked at but i'm just going to show you how you can make your own and i want to reiterate the importance of saying to yourself particularly if you're feeling really overwhelmed with with the, your first time in scrivener just say to yourself hey look i'm just going to make this template document i'm not going to keep it i'm just going to throw it away there's nothing i can screw up so uh, just make a quick template and it'll show you a little bit better how scrivener works so i'm just going to close this just so we don't get them mixed up uh, by the way, this is another template one I actually threw some data into. I might use that in a second, so I'll leave it open. So let's assume you're going to make a new project from a template. You're going to go up to File, go to New Project, and um, it's going to automatically show you these templates. So now, hold on, I need to show you. This is not showing up on the right screen. There we go. Okay, so this is what popped up. So, th by the way, I don't mean to get off track, but there is a tutorial in here that might be worth looking at as well. But for now, we're going to go down here to nonfiction, which is what I'm writing, and then I'm going to click on the general nonfiction. Um, you know, check out the other types if you want, and then I'm going to click choose. It's not super intuitive. And it's gonna ask me where I wanna put it. And so I'm gonna name it template test. And I'm gonna hit create. It already exists. So let's see, I'm gonna name it template test two. Okay. Yeah, I did make one earlier. Create, it's gonna take a couple of seconds to turn that out and Got the beach ball, there we go. All right, so you're gonna see something that looks a heck of a lot what I just showed you. In fact, it looks exactly like it, because that's what it is. It's exactly what we just looked at a second ago with all the different, um, you've got your manuscript, your different chapters, front matter, back matter, notes, ideas, research, and trash. All right, so just to show you how chapters work. I, I learned this by reading this document, by the way, how to use this template. So what I learned was if I want to make my chapters, I'm just going to go in here and start duplicating. Maybe I can copy and paste, copy, 
paste. Did that work? No. But I can duplicate, duplicate. So I know that I'm going to have six chapters at least. But I could do that. And what that's going to do, and you want to rename it. So this is going to be, uh, my first chapter is going to be uh, called, let's say I'll call it progress. All right. And then my second chapter, I'm not going to go into numbering. So I'm going to call it action. All right. So blah, blah, blah. What this document told me is that I don't have to number these. And if for some reason I wanted them to be in a different order, let's say I wanted action to go first before progress, then I would just drag it. And in the final compilation, it's going to put them in the order that I choose. Okay. So, uh, by the way, these sections are also, I can come in here and duplicate the sections as well. And if I wanted to have more than one section within a chapter, that's how I would do that. And so if I named it, so for example, if what type of action, so maybe I have, um, I don't know, I'm just going to make this up on the fly. What kind of action am I talking about? So iteration, that's one section. And then I could have maybe an examples. And then, of course, in, in this document, I would put in my iteration information. And that would show up. Um, so that's all I'm going to talk about in this one, um, because that's basically it for the templates. Now, if you have another nonfiction or another type or a fiction, you know, just choose that. And, and Scrivener is going to help you out with those details. It's basically going to look like this, something like it. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. We covered why is a template helpful. Um, and we covered, what else do we cover? Uh, we, and we made a new template document, something that I hope that you will do. I encourage you to do that. And if you like this, if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. That helps me and of course helps other people find this type of information. I'm David Bourne. You can find me at davidbourne.com and I hope you found this helpful. Thanks.